Uh, Crash, it's heartbreaking, man. Um, look, I don't know how graphic you guys want me to be, but I'll tell you some stories from the refugees that I heard that were coming off of the buses. And these, these aren't through a third or fourth party. These are through an interpreter telling me exactly what was going on. But um, the Russians have checkpoints throughout Ukraine that you have to pass through and they check your papers and everything else. And this particular woman was telling me, and I'm not exactly sure what city she was coming from, but there were 12 checkpoints from her city to the border. And in the middle of a checkpoint, Russian soldiers would take off these little girls. They would just pull them off the buses, 13, 14, 15 year old girls, uh, take them into town, do unspeakable things, and then put them back on a bus a couple of days later if they even survived. So the stories that you're hearing are true. I can tell you that I met one woman that was in a convoy of 10 with her friends and family. Uh, it was 10 cars. They let eight through and then Russian soldiers just decided to shoot up the other two cars that were left behind and killed everybody in the cars. Uh, I can tell you of a 70 year old woman who came off the bus and told us she was from Mariupol. She had a bandage over her eyes and she was alone. And she said the Russian troops had pulled over her car and shot her husband her sister and her grandkids, and for whatever reason, let her go. And she has nobody left. She got off the bus and was trying to get on another bus to go to Lithuania to see another one of her daughters. Uh, I've seen extremely elderly people shake uncontrollably shaking when they come off the bus. Also, imagine being in your 90s and having your routine and living in a country. And now here you are in a bus and going to a foreign land that you've never been before. So uh, I had sort of tried to prepare myself, um, but once you actually see it crash, uh, I, it, it's heartbreaking, man. It uh, has really affected me. Yeah, um, I do think it's making a difference. Um, I think, you know, crash, if you can wrap your head around, it's very difficult, I think, for Americans to wrap our head around the idea that A, we can have fighting within our own country, and B, there's an opportunity to wake up in the morning and there is no United States of America anymore. I mean, imagine looking at a map and it says Canada to the north, Mexico to the south, and who knows what it says in between, but it's not the United States of America. That's exactly what Ukrainians are going through. Um, they are leaving their country and have no idea if they're going back or not. So when they're making their trip, over the border to, from all corners of Ukraine, I think when they get off the bus, they are just looking for a little kindness and a little dignity. And I can tell you firsthand, just giving a lollipop to a young girl and watching her mother react to that kind of kindness and sobbing uncontrollably just from a lollipop or a bottle of bubbles, uh, is palpable, it's strong. So I think when they get off the bus and they see some smiling faces, and they get some coffee and some tea in them. And then they have to get, you know, the journey is not over there. They're just getting back on the buses. And then they're going to other different cities in Poland or all over Europe. So I think this stop to just give a little bit of kindness is going a long, long way. Yeah, I appreciate all the accolades, man. I was almost reluctant to do this because I am not looking for any pats on the back, man. But what I really would love is for people to donate any money that you have to care.org. And I sent you guys a link and I'm hoping you can put it up online. Uh, and that will directly um, take your funds and help out Ukrainian refugees. And they really need the help. And I can tell you right now that CARE is working passionately around the clock to make sure everybody is taken care of that comes across that border, man.